So we're going through some of the history of why, how we came about knowing that there were atoms and last in the previous lesson you would have learned uh, that the uh, following laws, law of conservation of mass from Lavoisier, the law of definite portion, proportions from Proust, and the law of multiple proportions from John Dalton were all discovered. And uh, I'll skip through the slides again that you should have already seen these. And uh, so, oh well, goodness, went too far. And so now we're gonna see how John Dalton, uh, the guy who came up with the multiple proportions law, he is going to put all this together, meld it all together into the first modern atomic theory. Now, what do we mean when we say modern? We don't mean it was made yesterday. This thing is hundreds of years old, a couple hundred years old. And so what do we mean whenever we say that it is modern? Well, modern in our sense means that it made predictions. It uh, had experimental evidence behind it. It had actual scientific reasons to uh, to know that it was correct. It made it told us it, it told us the correct prediction of some things that, uh, that they hadn't done before. And so we uh, um, we have a pretty good. It's a pretty compelling case. So uh, what did he say? What did he? We're going to kind of walk through some of the, the his ideas and see how they relate to those laws that we just talked about. So the first thing he said was that uh, elements, elements, remember the idea of elements, the things that can't be broken down, the things that are just what they are. Um, he said that elements were cons consisted of tiny little particles called atoms. He borrowed that word from the Greeks. Um, and he said that uh, elements were pure because all of the atoms inside of an element were identical. They were the same exact thing. They were tiny little round spheres of a particular mass. And he said that's what made them the same was that they had the same mass. If one was heavier, it was a different element. If one was lighter, it was a different element. But all elements were made of little atoms of the same mass. Um, and furthermore, he said that um, that's what made them different. If they were different elements, it's because they had different masses. Then he said that a compound happened whenever atoms of different elements would bind together, connect together in uh, different specific ratios. You might have two of this atom and one of that atom, or three of this atom and two of that atom, but the ratio of atoms of the different kinds of compounds would determine what your, uh, I'm sorry, the ratio of the different elements would determine what compound you were. Um, and so, that kind of uh, that next slide just kind of says what we just said again. Uh, and so all of these basic ideas all kind of get summarized into what we call the four points of Dalton's atomic theory. We kind of all uh, boil it down to four points. And so if you are taking notes on this, uh, it will, I'm going to go kind of fast, but you definitely want to stop and write these things down because they come up over and over. Uh, all matter is made of tiny indivisible. That doesn't say invisible. Uh, they are invisible. They're too small to see, but that's not what his, his uh, theory says. He says they're indivisible, uncuttable. Can't make them any smaller particles called atoms. Atoms of the same element are identical. Every carbon atom is like every other carbon atom. Um, and the, whenever they're different, say nitrogen atom, what makes a nitrogen atom different than a carbon atom? Well, it's its weight. This is actually not correct, as we'll see later, but this was the, uh, there's a tiny little bits that uh, Dalton got wrong, but, uh, but uh, in general, it was a huge revolutionary way of thinking about matter. Um, we're gonna see how that changes later, but for now, we'll, we'll just accept that atoms of different elements are different by weight. The third thing, and this is correct even today, the uh, different elements combine in whole number ratios three to two, four to three, two to one, uh, one to one, some ratio of atoms coming together uh, will form a compound. It's like water is a compound because two hydrogens and one oxygen come together to make a compound. They stick together in that ratio. That's the third point. And the fourth point is that a chemical reaction involves the rearrangement of atoms. Um, no new atoms are created or destroyed. This was a new idea. And you'll see that all these things kind of point back to those, uh, they're, they're great explanations for those kinds of uh, laws that we saw earlier. We saw that, um, first of all, 
remember that uh, Lavoisier said that atoms can't be, uh, matter can't be created or destroyed. And Dalton's saying, well, of course they can't. Of course they can't be destroyed because atoms, they're made of atoms and atoms don't uh, get created or destroyed. If you, if you burn a log, you, you kind of think of it going away. But what Dalton's saying is you're not burning any, you're not, you're, you're burning a log, but you're not destroying any matter. What you're doing is you're taking the atoms in that log and you're rearranging them into uh, different kinds of compounds with the air, with the atoms in the air to make different kinds of uh, atoms that weren't there before, or not different kinds of atoms, different kind of compounds, rearranging, taking the atoms that exist, taking them apart, rearranging them in new ways. And that is what the, uh, the that's what a chemical reaction is. And so uh, then uh, Proust's definite proportions basically says, well, the reason that a compound always breaks down the same way is because that's its definition. Its definition is it has this many of this atom and this many of this atom, and that's what makes it what it is. So of course, when you break it back apart, you're gonna get the same weight to the ratios of atoms. And, uh, and then uh, Dalton's own law of multiple proportions is also explained by this, because if you stick uh, atoms together in different ratios, voila, you got a different compound. And so that is, uh, Dalton's revolutionary atomic theory. So after Dalton, though, there were a few new details that he didn't know about that led to new models. So the first modern, the first big model of the atom that you really need to know about. Democritus didn't really have a model of the atom, he just had the word. Dalton gave us the first modern atomic model theory, and it wasn't exactly perfect, as I sort of alluded to, but uh, it was a huge step in the right direction. And what we're going to see next are a couple of stories about how the model changed uh, with new information.